OK. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, what you are going to get started in with chapter three is solving a system of linear inequ uh, sorry, solving a system of equations. All right? So we have learned, or you have learned, how to graph equations. And that's basically all we're going to do. The only difference with this is we are going to um, talk about the solution of this. Justin, are you moving? Circulating the videos? Circulating the videos? OK. So um, here I have 4x plus y is equal to 1, and x plus 4y is equal to negative 1. So basically what I need to do is graph each one of these separately. So um, hopefully you guys remember that when we're graphing them, these are both in uh, standard form. So to graph in standard form, you can either use the intercept method, or you can use um, converting them to slope intercept. Solving systems of equations by graphing. Three. Solving systems of equations by graphing. 3.1. So to solve, so what we're going to do is I would believe that rewriting these in slope intercept form would be the easiest method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for y in each case. So I'll subtract a 4x on both sides. I get y equals negative 4x plus 1. Over here, I subtract an x, and I get 4y is equal to a negative x minus 11. Then I'll divide by 4, and I get y is equal to a negative 1 fourth minus, oops, I'm sorry, I wrote down the problem wrong. That's a 12. My bad. Make sure when you divide that 4, you divide it into both of them. Sorry, guys. I forgot to. So now, now what we have is, that's x. So I have y is equal to a negative 1 fourth x minus 12 divided by 4 is 3. OK? So now what we're going to do is we're just going to simply graph our solution here. Actually, no, I did have it right. It was 11. So 11 thirds or 11 fourths. All right, so now let's go ahead and graph these individually. So the first one I'm going to graph is, I'm, remember, this is your y-intercept. Now remember, your y-intercept has a coordinate point of 0, comma 1. So I go up 1, and I make a nice big point. This is what we call our slope. And remember, our slope we always want to represent as a fraction, right? Which would also be 4 over negative 1. It doesn't matter which one of these you want to write it as, but that's why you want to represent it. So I'm going to go down 4 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. Negative 4 over 1. Or you could also go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the left 1. Does everybody see how either slope triangle is still going to give me the same slope? Brian, do you understand that? Um, OK, so that's why you want to be looking up here for this. So do you understand the y-intercept is that's where I made that coordinate point? That's 1, so you go up to 1 on the y-axis. This is the slope. We always want to represent the slope as a, ra as a um, ratio. So we're going to put it over 1. Okay? Sometimes it's a fraction. You don't have to do that. But remember, the slope represents the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates. So if that's a negative 4, you can write it as negative 4 over 1 or 4 over negative 1. So you graph it twice. So it's y-intercept. You don't have to. You only need to graph it once. But what I want you to understand is, if you say the change in the y-coordinates is negative 4, that means you go down 4 units. If you change the change in the x-coordinates is positive 1, you go over 1 unit. And I just want you to understand that that is the same as if you said the change in the y coordinates is positive 4 and the change of x coordinates is negative 1, because positive 4 and negative 1, you can see they make the same line. Now let's go over to this problem, which is negative 1 fourths. Um, so negative, one, negative 11 fourths, <coughs> that can be pretty much almost 3. That's going to be 2 and 3 fourths. Here, 4 goes into 11 two times with the remainder of three. So it's two and three-fourths, which would be 
negative 2.75. So I'll go down negative 1, 2.75. And then I follow again the same thing with the slope. I'm going to go down 1, down 1, and then over uh, down 1 over 4. So I go down 1 and then over 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So from here, I go over 0.75, and I go over 1, 2, 3, 4. My graph doesn't look as good as theirs. That should actually be like that. graph is not very good, and yours probably won't be there. But what you guys can see if we estimate here, um, that the coordinate point where they intersect is at 1, comma, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. That's going to be their intersection point. OK, my graph was kind of a little off. Um, but you guys can see that that is their intersection point. So when you have one intersection point, that is what we call a consistent solution. OK? That is a consistent solution. And when it intersects it once, it's independent. You guys need to know this, because for your homework, you're going to be writing these down. So when it intersects it once, at at any point, it's what we call consistent, and it's independent. You're going to need to write that down on your test and on your homework. Okay. All right, now let's talk about the other ones. 